Animated flowers rise and bumblebees move across the screen over an image of a forest. Text appears that reads, Enhancing Habitat for the Western Bumblebee and Olympic National Forest. Flashing images of forests and mountains. Map of Washington State showing Olympic National Forest in red as a bumblebee moves across the screen. Woman in a plaid shirt with glasses and a straw hat stands in front of a forest. So the Western bumblebee um, has a very large distribution. Text identifies Dr. Julie Combs, pollinator species lead, Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. It covers the whole United, Western United States. And over the last decade, we've seen a precipitous decline, especially uh, west uh, of the Cascade Range. Bumblebee on a purple flower. Western bumblebee is a generalist pollinator. And they will pollinate a lot of different species. Woman with dark hair and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uniform standing in front of a forest. Text identifies Aaron Adams, biologist, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And both by visiting the flowers to feed and then also as they take off and land, um, their bigger body creates kind of like a... Uh, Image of a bumblebee on a flower. Buzzing on the flower that's going to spread more of the pollen more effectively. Um, so they're a really important pollinator in ecosystems uh, here in the West. Pollinators are important. Woman stands in front of ferns in a U.S. Forest Service shirt. Text identifies Karen Holtrop, wildlife biologist, Olympic National Forest. Because we need pollinators for flowering plants. Plants need pollinators to grow. The pink flowers. And to reproduce. There's something over 80% of the foods that we consume are a result of animals pollinating plants. And so if we didn't have pollinators, we would not have a lot of our plants. And what's interesting about uh, the western bumblebee is that, you know, it really used to be one of the most widespread species in the western United States, and now it's incredibly um, rare. Close-up of person holding a bumblebee in a clear plastic tube. We've been doing bumblebee surveys for a few years now, documenting all the different species, and we have only recorded western bumblebee at two sites in Olympic National Forest. And when we did see it... Image of bumblebee on pink flower. We would only see one or two in one site, so they're quite rare. There are a lot of um, historic records, records of people observing them that goes back to early 1900s even. And with these recent surveys indicate that they have declined in the forest because we have only found them in two places. A lush forest. Text reads, supported in part by a grant from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Olympic National Forest, Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the Xerxes Society are boosting efforts to help this critical species. Bumblebee moves across the screen. So we're doing a lot of seeding of native plant species and planting plants in areas such as um, timber harvest areas and along um, closed roads to provide uh, flowering plants for western bumblebees and other bumblebees. So we're going in after these um, areas are harvested. Woman in a white U.S. Forest Service shirt with a red bandana on her head stands in front of a forest. Text identifies Cheryl Bartlett, forest botanist for Olympic National Forest and um, planting things like um, goldenrod. Dry field of late season flowers. Or uh, pearly everlasting. Orange butterfly on a white flower. Or some of the um, flowers that we know that are particularly beneficial. Small plant in tall grass. Two pollinators. Uh, field of pink and white wildflowers. Um, and that's part of um, sort of a multi-species. Purple lupin flower. Uh, habitat enhancement that we do. Weed management for sure is crucial for helping pollinators because we want to maintain that um, that native ecosystem that they have evolved and adapted to. Panning up a tree in a lush forest. Um, sometimes if you just let the weeds go it can displace native species that perhaps a particular pollinator might depend on. So we have to be really careful to manage the weeds to prevent that from happening. Dr. Julie Combs examines a bumblebee in a clear plastic tube. 
Another thing that we are doing is we, we've been doing bumblebee surveys so that we can find out where western bumblebees are on the forest. And Close up of a bumblebee in a clear plastic tube. Other bum bumblebee species, their distribution, and what plants are they using? What kind of habitat do they use? White lily in a forest. So that we have that information in order to manage for their habitat. Two chocolate lily flowers. So, so looking ahead um, to what the future holds for the western bumblebee, we are hopeful. A brown hat with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service emblem. With these collaborative conservation efforts. With Logo of Olympic National Forest carved in wood. Multiple agencies, citizen scientists. Logos of Xerxes Society and Washington Department Fish and Wildlife appear on the screen. Who are working diligently to really understand the ecology distribution abundance. Uh, and the threat factors, um, we are hoping uh, in the future that we can um, stave off the decline and, and conserve the species. Bumblebee on purple flower, fade to black. Text reads, produced by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Washington Ecological Services Office, as bumblebees move across the screen. Special thanks to our partners, U.S. Forest Service, Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, Xerxes Society. Music by Johnny Hawaii. Animated logo of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service.